Audrey Johnson. And I'm Charlotte Reed. Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the Transcript. Transcript. This week, the Transcript crew prepares to hit the workforce with the internship program, hits the court with members of the tennis team, gets cooking with Mr. Kinsman, and revisits upcoming holidays before break. Hi, I'm Kaylee Hunter Gasparini, and welcome back to Tell It Like It Is. We all know about subjects we have to study in school, English, math, science, but NHS offers a wide range of opportunities for students to take learning outside of the classroom. This week, I explored other options of study that are offered in our school, specifically internships. So my name is Misha Began. I'm the internship coordinator. And so that means I work with students on having successful placements with internship sites in the community, but then also with employers and making sure that employers are able to support our students by providing them opportunities. An internship is an opportunity to be able to be exposed to a profession that you're interested in, to receive mentorship from somebody in the community, to really um, take advantage of the opportunity to explore a career path and what it takes to be successful in a certain job. I also met with multiple students who currently have internships around Northampton to hear about their experiences. I am an intern at Grindstone Mountain Farm in Southampton, Massachusetts. Anything that the coach or our barn manager doesn't have time to do in their day-to-day -day basis, that's what I pick up doing. I've been riding horses for 12 years now. Um, I'm kind of known as the crazy horse girl, but I've been riding at this barn specifically for almost three years. When senior year approached, I was like, I would love to do an internship, I'd love to get a free period. Um, and this is a place that I spend a lot of my time. My internship is at Ryan Road Elementary School. I'm basically a student teacher. I go from fourth grade writing to some days first grade art, some days first grade PE, and I'll always go to first grade lunch at the end, at the end of every day. I don't know, I really like working with kids. My summer job, I do work Safety Village, which works with four to six year olds, so um, typically I'll be working with them. And like at the beginning of the semester, I still had no idea, but now I kind of like have a direction. So my internship is a chance to work on software with um, a teacher here, Miss Keo, who works in the second floor computer lab. Um, and I'm creating a user interface to run on a very, very low power computer. Um, it's not technically called a computer even. I've been working on the hardware, the, the parts of the project you can hold for about two and a half years now. And that was a kind of like a class outside of school, but self-guided. Internships are open to students as a class, and it's a good way to follow a passion of yours. So if you're interested, talk to Ms. Began or your guidance counselor. The world is your oyster. Don't be afraid to try new things. Happy Friday. Hi, I'm Alexa, and welcome back to The Leftovers. This week, we are here with Paul Kinsman, the band director here at NHS, and we will be making salsa. First thing you are going to need is a Tomato. Yeah, tomatoes. And what we have here, ooh, is a... <laughs> All at once. All at once, yeah. For our, I guess, spice ingredients, we have some garlic salt, just normal salt for flavor later. Cumin. Cumin. Mm. Mm -hmm. For the humans. We are going to blend this, and then we will be back with some chips and the finished salsa. Shall we enjoy the reward? I think we absolutely shall. Here is Here chip for you. Here, wait. Scoops. Whole wait. wheat. Wait. Cheers. Cheers. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. We did it. Tell me about your prior experience with music production. Music production. So, I didn't start getting into music production until actually after college. After college, I decided to skip out on America for a little while, and I moved to South Korea for one year, and then Hanoi, Vietnam for three years. And uh, in both of those places, I met all these people from all over the world that had these amazing skills producing albums, 
and recording artists a lot. I was really inspired by those individuals. So I continued to, uh, so I started learning how to, how to make this stuff happen. I, I got this program called Ableton Live mm -hmm. and I started watching hours and hours of YouTube videos. Why choose NHS band? Well, so in college, I went to UMass down the road, and so in college I was doing um, my student teaching mentorship here. So I got mm -hmm. to work with Deb, and I got to see what this school brings to the table. And, and I'll tell you, this school is very different from, from most other high schools. It has a very high caliber level of musicianship. So I felt that uh, coming to this high school, I'd be able to utilize my skills as a jazz musician, my skills as a classical musician, and then to begin to incorporate all of this extra stuff that I learned at, after college, like music production, mm -hmm. and to be able to, to bring it to a, a very open and very talented community of musicians and learners. All right, wonderful. Thank you so much for joining us Thank this you. week. Hi, I'm Amelia Tamayo. Last weekend was the Arcadia High School Invitational, where 31 national track and field records were set. Among the contestants was Chloe Cunliffe, who pole vaulted a height of 14 feet and 8 inches. Wow. In other news... Next weekend will be Passover and Easter. Exciting! As we know, there are many people in the Northampton metropolitan area who celebrate one or both of these holidays, but not everyone really knows what they are about. To get a better understanding of the meaning behind these holidays and the unique traditions that local families partake in, we sat down with celebrants and participants. Well, of course I could tell you a little bit about the story of Passover. The story of Passover all starts in the land of Egypt. And the Jews were enslaved for 400 years in the land of Egypt. Egypt. There were people that were Jewish and Pharaoh didn't like them. So he said that all Jewish males must be thrown into the river. But one little Jewish boy was saved and that was Moses. And was put in a basket in the Nile River. And the basket floated away and went into Pharaoh's palace. And then he found out he was Jewish and he went and he lived in exile in the desert for a while. and then. He found this burning bush, and through the bush, God told him that he needed to free his people. So he came back to Egypt, and he said, Pharaoh, let my people go. Let my people go. But Pharaoh says no, and God sends down ten plagues, blood, locusts, frogs, hail and blood, beast, death of oxen and other farm animals, darkness, boils, and the last one was the death of your firstborn son. And that's the one that everyone in Egypt was like, okay, this guy's the real deal. That one makes Pharaoh go crazy. And he's like, all right, I'll let your people go. And then Pharaoh's like, actually, never mind. And so they chase them. And then the Jews are trapped in between the Red Sea and Pharaoh. And they see Pharaoh in the distance. But then Moses raises his staff. And then the Red Sea parts. And they run through. And then the Red Sea collapses and kills the Pharaoh. And the Jews are saved. Easter is celebrating the resurrection of Jesus. So um, on Good Friday, which is the Friday before Easter Sunday, uh, Jesus was crucified by uh, Pontius Pilate. And on the third day, he, he rose again in accordance with the scripture. My grandpa will cook up like a, like a nice ham, nice piece of meat, you know, some, some potatoes. It's, it's very, I guess, meat and potatoes kind of <laughs> kind of holiday. It's really nice to have like matzo ball soup and like matzo haroset sandwiches. Um, well, matzo ball soup, uh, the matzo ball is made with matzo meal. Um, I don't really know how it's made, but it's put into um, chicken soup generally, into chicken broth and it's matzo ball soup. And charoset, depending on if you are an Ashkenazi Jew or a Sephardic Jew, um, it depends on like what kind of nuts you use and what kind of apples you use. It's sort of this paste. Thanks for watching, and don't hesitate to reach out if you have a topic that you'd like to see covered on the transcript. I'm Amelia Tamayo, and this has been In Other News. Bye! Hi, I'm Gabe Nicotera. Welcome to Hamped Up. Y'all ready for this? There's a certain knack to tennis that little can pick up on, but for sophomore Stefan Johnson, that wasn't the case. This week, I sat down with the prodigy to understand his gift. So I'm joined here with Stefan Johnson. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Yep, you're welcome. I know last year you beat the undefeated number one player from East Long Meadow. And that being said, as a freshman doing that, where do you see yourself in two years, senior year? 
Uh, hopefully in senior year, winning the Western Mass uh, individual tournament, which I lost to that kid before. That sucks. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and getting to states and doing well there, which would be a challenge. And I guess I'm just curious, how long has tennis been like a big part of your life? Um, I've always played tennis since I was really young. I started like hitting balls when I was like four or five, and I started playing tournaments when I was eight years old, and it's just carried through until now. Nice. And of course, we're both aware that grunting actually plays a large part in tennis. Um, so how do you utilize the act of grunting when you're playing in your matches? Um, I personally don't grunt too loud. Uh, I do grunt, however, just to get more power in my shots and really like aim the ball sometimes, <laughs> like make the balls in a lot more frequently. I gotcha. Thank you for being on Hamped Up. Thank you. For centuries, tennis has been thought of as the rich person sport of the world. But I know around here, not everyone has their own tennis court. I wanted to get to know Chris Raphael Riley, so I hit him up about going down to the tennis courts. All right, I'm joined here with Chris Raphael Riley. Pleasure having you on the show. Thanks, Gabe. Nice to see you. Uh, you think the team's going to be doing pretty good this year? Um, no, I got a feeling we'll be pretty good. Last year, we went to the finals against Longmeadow. Um, this year, we're looking to repeat, so hopefully beat them this year. So I know a lot of sports teams make group chats to, you know, get the word across on certain things, and yours is actually called Pen15, so what, what, you, what would be a typical text that you'd see in that group chat? Well, Gabe, the funny thing is I probably couldn't say it on camera, so I won't. Um, there's a lot of vulgar stuff that we say, and uh, it's usually Noah Aronstein who says it, so. And are you more of a forehand or backhand kind of guy? Well, Gabe, I like both, but really my forehand's my strength, so I'll go with my forehand. And you know, when it's summer and you watch tennis, are you more of a Serena kind of guy or more of a Venus kind of guy? I like them both. They're both good players, but I really like Serena a lot. She's better on court and off court. She's a big presence, so. And as far as the new members of the tennis team goes, how are they, you know, lifting up the team spirit this year? Well, especially uh, you, Gabe, and uh, Aiden Shigru and Noah Ehrenstein, they provide a lot of locker room experience and uh, are great guys to have on the team. Uh, just to chat with on the bus, you know, great guys. Can you talk about Ehrenstein rebouncing from a car crash? Yeah, so recently uh, Ehrenstein got a pretty bad car accident. He ran into a cinder block at the bank. Uh, car did not do too well, but he's fine, so uh, he'll be back on the court in no time. And I guess I forgot to bring my calendar to practice. When's our next match? Um, Friday, we play the Terriers of West Springfield. Should everyone pop out? Um, yeah. All right, thanks for being on Hamped Up. Thank you, Gabe. Like we said before, the tennis team has their next match today in West Springfield at 4 o'clock. Wish me luck in my doubles exhibition game where I'll be beside senior Aiden Shugru. Thanks for watching Hamped Up. I'm Gabe Nicotera. Thanks for watching. Make sure to sign up with one of the freshman class officers for the class-wide game of Assassins by the Friday after April break. Mm -hmm.